I had a neighbor who was in the school system in Ilion, where my father was a school superintendent. And he was a colonel across the field in the, Air, in the uh, SAGE building in the Air Force Reserve. And he said, well, I'll get you into the guard. And he brought me over here and in effect said, take him. And he didn't know for sure who the commander over here was, and it was Lieutenant Colonel Irwin, we found that out. I got a call from the base one day saying, would I be interested in coming out to fly the C-47, the Goonie Bird? We got called up in 1961 for the Berlin call-up. About six months after I got into unit, the unit got called up for France, Fallsburg Air Base over there. And there, General Irwin had to take the fighter squadron and get to Europe, hopscotch with the F-86s. We got back from that time on, General, General Irwin was the face of the air guard in Syracuse. I was kind of in awe of him because I had heard so much about him. And uh, after I, I first met him and had heard a little bit about him, I, I could see where he was really running the unit with an iron fist, you know. He was really in command of the whole thing. The thing I, I always was impressed about him, he seemed to be a visionary kind of fellow. He knew the Air National Guard was, had, had to prove itself. He wanted to make the unit the best possible unit it could be as fast as possible to make a name for Syracuse as well as make a name for the Air National Guard. So many things that he instituted, started, his influence was able to put here. He, he had the command for the longest period of time. He was uh, looking ahead in, in orchestrating many of the changes along the way. He, he developed uh, an outstanding reputation in the community and a network unlike almost any other guard unit in the country. Well, General Irwin was uh, a key player in the 174th, uh, obviously one of the original members of the organization and uh, helps stand up the organization, uh, you know, downtown and, and, and later uh, come out here to Hancock Field. It started with some, I don't know, 35 or six people back in 1947. We are where we are because you know, they, they had the, um, the fortitude to stay in the fight and, you know, um, finally acquire aircraft, turn, turn a little airport into a, into a wing. Then in 75, General Irwin performed probably his greatest service. He kept this unit here in Syracuse. If it hadn't been for him, we would have been at Griffiths, and who knows what would have happened at that point. Griffiths shut down in the, in the 90s. And, and it has, has successfully stayed on this base and continued to grow. We went through, in my time, in, in Irwin's time, the F-86, the A-37, the A-10, the F-16, and now the Reaper, you know? That's, that's a, a real stepping stone to, to the modernization in the Air Force. After he retired, 
He would come out here for every deployment of, of personnel. And when they came back, he would be in the hangar to welcome them back because he just felt that every member of the 174th was, was a family member to him. He retired in 1977, and then uh, 13 years later, during the Gulf War, someone actually wrote on one of the bombs that were going to be dropped on Iraq, and it says, To Iraq, um, I'm too old to be there, um, so I'm sending this to you from B.G. Kurt. And that's just a testament that 13 years later, you know, unit members remember him, and I'm sure he was there at that deployment as well, seeing us off. Incredibly supportive, um, very proud of us and basically there at every single major function. Totally dedicated to this unit. And yeah, what a great patriot. You know, as we look back through history and we look at how our Air Force, specifically our Air National Guard and the 174th has matured through the years and, and grown into what it is today. I know no higher tribute than the name of this building for him. It was built long after he was here, but it so fitting that it would be named for him. Now that we have the General Irwin plaque in front of the building every day walking in, I think it'll put a smile on a lot of people's faces who remember him. It's being named, dedicated to the person most deserving of it in, in the 174th history. I miss him. He, you know, he would call me every now and then when I was the wing commander and uh, you know, offer up his thoughts, I'd bump into him somewhere and he would go out of his way to come up and see me. He leaves a legacy that will not be forgotten by 174th Airmen. He was a member of that greatest generation that was coined. And in my opinion, he was a shining star in that greatest generation. Even though the world was changing, that you couldn't recognize things like the boys from Syracuse, it was on the tip tanks that went around the world. He made it famous, the saying, this was the boys from Syracuse. And for years and years and years, he was the boy from Syracuse. And that was the way he was viewed in the community. When you talked of this unit, it's general. A dream come true.